looks like YouTube is not really for this. Facebook is running. have to run Facebook for this. Alright, YouTube is not wanting to run today, so YouTube Live will not be happening. Ugh. Just Facebook and TikTok. No YouTube live today. But we'll have the recording and it'll be on YouTube um, later on this afternoon um, once we get it all com com converted and everything like that. Well, good morning, good morning, and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you that are watching online. Happy Mother's Day. And to the mother, the only mother that's in this house, right? That's you, Miss Crystalline, Mama Crystalline, Wife Crystalline. Mimi, <laughs> that's what, what's her name, Mimi, Mimi Chrislin, yep, <laughs> yep, Jimmy loves his Mimi, yep, all right, so let's, before we get started, let's start off with a word of prayer, and, uh, because I already feel, shoot, things are already shifting, and so I can just feel, the, I don't know where this word's gonna, is how bad it's gonna change, <laughs> but, you know, we get, we still got our scriptures to deal with, the, the remote control is not changing, so we're just gonna leave that, you'll have to, just listen to the scriptures. You might be able to see it online, but here in the house you won't be able to read along because um, you're having trouble with the remote control. So let's get started with a word of prayer, and then we'll hear what God has to say. Father, we just came. thank you again for this opportunity to preach your word. Holy Spirit, I ask now your help. Hide me behind the cross, and no one sees me or hears me, but they hear and see you, and that they know if this is word is to direct us to be closer to our Father and to Jesus Christ. So we're just relying on you, Holy Spirit, right now, that you'll move mightily in this time. Uh, have your way. Um, whatever you want to say, let it be done. Whatever needs to be held, hold it. And that way we bring honor and glory to the Father. And God, we just thank you for all that you do in our lives. And we just, again, thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior. And thank you for always being there for us. And we just give all the honor and glory to you all. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, just, uh, the title of our sermon today is called Mom Saved Our Family. Mom Saved Our Family. Um, in this, I kind of, uh, as I was putting things together, I kind of think back about my mom. Very first time, if you ever say anything about my mom, first thing I'm going to go to is that first time that I remember she was mad at me. She packed my stuff up in a bag, a trash bag, set it outside the door, and locked me out of the house and left me a little note. She said, if you think life is better over there, then go take your stuff and go live over there. And she locked me out of the house. The other thing that I think about when I, when, uh, when I think, first thing right off the bat when I think about my mom, is I think about the time that she had the paddle I was bad I think I did something to my brother but I just remembered she grabbed the paddle off the refrigerator she said bend over put your hands on the chair I put my hands on the chair she went like this and she hit me in the butt and she hurt her wrist she dropped the paddle and she hurt her wrist and she turned around and she said just sit down and I had to stay in the chair until my dad got home and then when my dad got home, my mom comes over there and she sits down and she starts talking to my dad about what I did. And then she says, listen, I cannot spank him anymore. He's getting too big uh, that I, I just can't. My, my arms, just to leave any kind of pain on his butt, I can't do it. It hurts me. So in that, the rule was made. If I got into the points that I needed discipline with a spanking, I was to sit in that spot until my dad came home, and then my dad pulled the paddle out, and he tore my butt up. My mom was no longer going to do that part of the job. So in that, that's the first things that I remember right off the bat from when I, listen, when I think about my mom. But then when I moved from that position, the next thing I think about my mom is the time that when I was out with my buddy doing something really stupid, we was riding these little mini bikes. If you know what a mini bike is, it's like a motorcycle, but it's really small, you know. It has a little tiny motor on it, but you get on there. 
Well, my buddy, he decides to do something and move the brake somewhere else, and he didn't tell me, and I, I was like, the, the week before we were riding it, I always thought the brake was on the one side of the foot. Well, I'm pushing down there, and he moved it up here to the hand, you know? So I was like this, and I'm pushing on the thing, I'm like, where's the brake? Where's the brake? And I look up, there's a tree, and I went like this, and next thing you know, it threw me off of the bike, and I hit the tree. But well, when I hit the tree, it put a big gash in my knee that you could see like three different layers of meat in my knee. It was wide, laid wide open. I didn't bleed, not one stitch, you know. But my friend picks me up and he carries me to the house. And I walk in there and, and I'm going, Mom, Mom, where are you? And she comes running out, what's the matter? And she goes, I said, I got to go to the hospital. He goes, what for? And I went like this. I said, look. And she looks at me and she goes, um, let's try to get it closed up and let me get my purse, okay? And so she does some little doctoring to, thing to me and then she takes me to the hospital. The next one is that I come in, I'm with a friend and we're trying to make this new um, area to make our clubhouse area. And we're chopping down some weeds and some trees and stuff. And I borrowed my grandma's sickle. And so you know what a sickle is. It's got a curved blade on it. And it's really made to, you know, really, really sharp. And, you know, to cut down the, the trees and the, and the high grass and stuff like that. And so we're whacking things away. And my friend David's over here. He's doing his part. And, you know, we're just talking back and forth, you know. And I'm cutting and cutting. I'm getting tired so I can switch over. I'm cutting and cutting. And I'm switching over. I'm cutting and cutting. And I went like this. And I was tired. But I didn't pay attention. And went like this. And went to grab the handle. Missed the handle. Went whoosh, like this. And slid my finger from this side to this side and all of a sudden every time my heart beat you saw the blood go whoosh. I mean it was like a fountain it went whoosh, like that and so I was like oh man I gotta go to the hospital Dave's like what I said look man it went whoosh. so I was like I'll be right back and so I went up there and walked in the house and said mom get your purse I said we gotta go to the emergency room she said what for now <laughs> You know, and I says, I cut my finger. I think I might have cut it off. And she says, cut it off. I said, yeah, look. And I just went, and she says, let me get my keys. You know, and so that, I think when I think about my mom, I think about those things in life that I did with her. And then the, 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 the last really memory that really stands out about those one is the one conversation when I was far, far away from Jesus, I was a grown person. I was, I was in my adulthood when I thought I was 21. And I thought I was, you know, I could do my own thing. I moved out of the house. Why I moved out of the house? Because I want to do things my way. I don't want to do what mom and dad's always tell me to do. That's why I moved out. So in that, I'm sitting there. And my mom invites me to this, uh, like a place of neutral, you know, a place out to eat, you know. And so she's having this conversation of she's worried about me. I'm like, well, why you got to worry about me? I'm fine. I got a job. I'm, I'm making the money. I'm paying all my bills. All these issues. Well, really, it's your brother and your sister that have bring the concern to me that I need to talk to you. I'm like, okay, what's up? You know, well, they think you got a, a, a drinking problem. They think you drink too much. I said, I don't drink too much. They're crazy. I said, look, do I ever get angry with anybody and start any kind of fighting or troubles like that? And she said, no. I said, am I ever here about me ever being late to work or missing work? She said, no. I said, see? I don't got a problem. But just that communication right there brought me to an understanding, you know what? If my mom had enough courage to turn around and say that, that she's worried about me, maybe I just need to back off a little bit on my drinking just so that she'll be okay. And those are the things that really, when I think about my mom, I th stand out to me. But understanding that, that when I think about it, that many of you right now, you're, gonna, you're struggling right now because some of you lost your mom. I mean, this right now, my dad, this is his first Mother's Day without his mom. My, my grandma lived to 97 years old. She was one day short of being 98. For my son and my daughters and, and, and uh, my children, they lost their mom in 2018 to cancer. So today's a rough day for some people. My wife, Chrislyn, she lost her mom. She's missing her mom. Several times through the years, she, she talks about her mom, and she just reminisces about her mom. And especially, I love when I hear the stories about her mom's hair and how long her mom's hair was and the things that she did with her hair. I love listening to those stories. But today is not just an understanding. It's not just to, to, to um, say, I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. But I also want to say that it's still good. There's good memories there. Hold on one second. I get a drink. <clears throat> but in that, 
every mom has a story that you can go back to when you think about them. They'll tell you, back when I was this, I was this kind of a person. You know, that, and you would look at your mom and she's a saint, you know. But before she was a saint, before she met Jesus, to some of the things that she did. Like one of my stories about my mom is as crazy as that. My mom met my dad when she was 12 years old. And when she met my dad, she says, I'm going to marry that man or that boy. You know, and, she, and sure enough, she married him. You know, and, and so 57 years of, of, of marriage, 58 years, they just, got, they just had their anniversary. 58 years of marriage, you know, they're still together and things are still great. They've had their ups and downs. But then there's other mothers, you hear their stories and what they went through to where they are now. That's why I called this, this, this message here, Mom Saved Our Family. Because there was a, a moment in time that things, something changed in their life when they got this vision, life is more than just about me. And maybe today for you, that some of you that are here, you're teenagers and you're young. I mean, because when I think about my mom, she was 12 when she decided that was going to change her life. That man, I'm going to marry him. That changed her life. It turned around and opened her eyes in her relationship with Jesus, knowing that, that I need Jesus also to deal with this man. That in your life, you're going to have to make a decision, first off, foremost, is that your relationship with Jesus is going to need to come first. But there's going to be a point in time that you're going to have to say, life is not about you. Life is about family. It's about understanding you're going to have to make a decision that will maybe, that will save your entire family. And how to think that maybe one choice will not just save them salvation-wise, but it will save them physically-wise. And so we're going to look at a story in, in Joshua chapter 2 about a woman. And you're going to look at, you're going to look at like this story. It's like, you're crazy, John. Why, Pastor John, why would you talk about a, a woman who's considered to be um, not a nice woman? Because all women are not always nice as what you thought. Even the good women, you think... There still is a past because when you research what God's word says is if you commit one sin, you commit them all. If you just lie one time, you're just as much as in bad shape as the one who committed adultery and lied and, and, and murdered somebody. That's kind of harsh. That's, that's the, I'm not the judge. It's God being the judge. So let's just read through the story and let's see what God has to say through this story about mothers now that will be how's that because even for you as young teenagers you're going to be a mother at some point or another 90 some i think it was 96 percent of all females at one point or another are going to have a child so you're going to be a, a mother unless you're just dead set that you're going to be celibate and never have sex with any man you're not going to get married and then that's you know you're not going to be a mother that's the only way it's going to happen but for some, let's go on to the scriptures. Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. Let's go to read. It says, And now Joshua the son of Nun set out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came into the house of a, of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. Now understand. Every woman, before we read on, every woman has a past. Most of the times we always bring up the guys, because the guys are the ones that are most mischievous. But I got stories. I got women friend, and I got stories. Every woman has a past. So understanding where they were to where they're going is going to be needed, and it never defines you, listen to this, it never defines you of who you really are. What you've done in the past is not who you are meant to be in your purpose. It does not define you. So to sit back and say, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to sit back and say, well, I used to do this and I used to do that. You know, for me, my, my thing was, uh, um, I, I, I've been there before. You know, it was like back in the day before phones, 
When you want to look to pornography, you had to go to the store and buy the books, you know, buy the magazines, you know. And, you know, and so instead of having to go to the store because it was kind of embarrassing to, you know, to, to pull it out there and lay it down there and pay for cash, it was just to buy a prescription that would be sent straight to your house. You know, so that way you get a little brown paper thing, you know, and you'd be able to pull it back there and look at your pornography that way. That was me. But it, does it define me of who I am or where I came from? No. That was a sinful life. It was before Jesus Christ. And in that, Jesus will deliver you from those problems. It's the same with women. More women have a problem with pornography. It's almost equal as the men now, from my understanding of my reading and my, my uh, uh, research, that women are more uh, um, stuck on pornography just as much as men are. So we see, see that this woman here is, she's going to help these men of God. Understanding women, listen to this. Sometimes, somebody's going to cross your path that will change your life. This woman is just doing her job of creating income to take care of her family, and these two guys come up out of nowhere, and they come and visit her because they're spying out the land. Sometimes, somebody's going to be coming across your path, and they're sent by God. You need to pay attention. Sometimes, they're not sent by God. Sometimes, they're sent by the devil to, to try to hurt you. So it's the understanding you will not know unless you have a relationship with God to give you that discernment of what these people are for. You know, in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6 says this. It says, we are all infected and impure with sin. When we dis display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall and our sin sweeps us away like the wind. Everyone has a problem with sin. So, but it doesn't define you in that time that you're battling with it. What defines you is if you make up your mind, you're going to stay there. Your purpose is not to stay there. Your purpose is greater than that. So let's read on. We see in there in verse 2. Back with Rahab. And so, and it was told to the king Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come to, um, here tonight from the children of Israel to search the, the country. So the king of Jericho sent Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have ent entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took to took the two men and hid them. So she said, yes, the men came to me, but I did, I did not know where they were from. And it happened as the gates were uh, being shut, when it, it was dark, that the men went out. Where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for, I, for you may overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flox, flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. Let me hold up right there. So automatically, we see the woman. She's a, she's a harlot, prostitute. She sells herself, sells her body to create income, to pay her bills, and to do life. These two men of God, she knows of them because they have a rapport that they were from Israel. They came up out of Egypt and they heard all the stuff that happened. You understand sometimes in your life people already hear about you and they know about you before you even enter them into their life. Oh, I heard an amen right there, did I not? <laughs> you think you are doing your business, especially now. Online, many of you are posting your stuff. I heard this. <laughs> I heard. I heard this guy give a real bad report about a date he was on. He said, "I went on this date expecting this thing about this woman, you know, and, and I and I really liked her, but the whole date was between her and the phone. I'm here with my." Taking her picture, posting it on her on her social media. I'm here with a. And she never communicated with the guy the whole time she was busy about taking pictures of her food, where she was at, where she was doing like that, you know. And so you know what the guy did? He turned around and said, nah, that's the last time I'll be dating you, so we're done. 
You see, life is not all about us. You need to pay attention to what's happening here. And she knew these guys and their reputation that their God, how great their God was. And in that, so she had a fear and a reverence for these guys saying, you know what? Whatever is what is with you guys. I, and if, you, if God is coming here to destroy this place, I want mercy. Who wouldn't? So in that, she says, I will do whatever it takes so these guys, so I don't have to pay the punishment. So what she does, first off she does, she lies. She lies to the government, tells them that I don't, they came, but they left. Really, they didn't leave. So she told a partial truth, but it was a partial lie as well. So get it. And then she turns around and hides them, and then she tells them, listen, you know, we'll read on what happens next. <clears throat> let's read on it says and then verse 7 it picks up and says and then the men pursued them by the road and the uh to the jordan to the fords and, and and as soon as those who pursued them had gone out they shut the gates but before they lay down she came up to them on the roof and said to the men i, I know the lord has given you the land and, and the territory of you has fallen on us and that the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you for we have heard how the lord dried up the waters of the red sea for you when you were, when you came out of egypt and when you did when and what you did to the two kings of amorites uh, who were on the other side of the jordan sea and og which you utterly destroyed. And as soon as he, we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. Now, therefore, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token and spare my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. This is where I get the title. This is where I get the title. Mom saved our family. Even though Rahab was not a mom yet, her vision of understanding she has more about to do with her family that she has an opportunity to make a deal with these men of God that they're on a mission to search out and to come back with information how they were going to destroy this city and in that the God was with them that there's no doubt this place is going to fall. It's almost like America. And you could go back to some of the videos before where God has opened up the prophecies that God, America, is going to have its fall. But what about those that are fearful of God and they trust God and they leave? it is God is going to use them as the remnant to be the eyewitnesses and be the ones that will minister to those that are hurting and in pain to show them that there's going to be life after death if you will just trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And here's this woman, she's standing in this position, understanding, I need to fear God because his judgment is true and precise and swift. And many of us don't believe it because we see so much other bad stuff always happening. Yes, but that's the understanding. There's two realms of this. There is the evil realm that means to steal, kill, and destroy. But there's also God's realm of that he's bringing justice to those who sin against him. And we forget about this because the gospel that we've heard for the many years is God is good. I will name it and claim it. I will get this and I will get that. And that this part of God, but we miss out on the part of God that says, your sins will be called up before me. And I call them that they stink and they're like filthy rags. And I'm going to judge that. Right. And now judgment is now falling on the church right now in America. That the nastiness that the pastors are doing behind the pulpit and, and in secret with the secretary is coming out before everybody. 
And then there's even those that are just having, and even the good pastors, you're seeing just the, the fear of God coming in the church, that even as the, the pastors stand up there, but we talked about a couple weeks ago, the one man come up there with a knife trying to kill the pastor in front of everybody. And then there were the other black pastor that we talked about last week, that the guy come up there with the gun and started to try to pull it, and something went wrong with the gun. But see, even showing God's mercy right there, that God is in the midst of it, that there's a shakening happening in the church first. Then the America itself is going to have its day. That's what's yet to come. And as this woman gets the vision, God is true. God is just. He is swift. He's going to judge. He's going to make. He, I, we know our hearts are feeling heavy because we know we're going to be judged. We know this place, Jericho, is going to fall. We know God's people are going to come over and they're going to take over this place. We know it. So what are we going to do? We're going to, I'm going to step in to try to save my whole family and I'm going to try to negotiate a deal with these men of God. Maybe it's to understand at one point, women, women, listen to this, because you're more influential than you really know, that it might be that one person that crossed your path that you make friends with that will change your entire life and save not just you, but your family. We talked about many weeks, uh, weeks ago of the opportunity that, that sometimes God's word says this. Sometimes God's word says like this, make friends with the heathens. Why would we want to make friends with the heathens? First off, they need Jesus. Jesus sat down and had supper with the sinners. And, and then the, the religious people mocked and scored him because he did that. But in that, you just don't know that they need salvation and you being friends with them might lead them to salvation. So that's why you should befriend them. But just in case you miss out on that, the word of God says that the treasures of financial gain will come from the sinners. That you just don't know that sometimes you make friends with the heathens and they're able to turn around and bless your business because they got contacts that God will use to bless your business. That's not even in my notes. I don't even know where that came from. But it's to say for you, understanding, you need to be careful of who you're putting down with your words and who you're turning your back to and who you're shunning because they might be the person that will put you in a blessed place. We'll find out how much, how much she's going to be blessed by this transaction of a deal. So she deals with them. She said, look, I saved your life. I lied. I told them you were gone and here you are and I'm saving your life. I want to make a deal. Let's read on. Verse 14, and so the men answered her, our lives uh, for yours. If none, you tell the business of ours, and it shall be. When the Lord has given us the land, that we will do deal kindly and truly with you. So Then she let the men down by a rope through the, through the window for, for her house, from her house on the city wall. She dwelt on the wall. And she said to them, go to the mountain unless they pursue to meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Afterwards, you may go your way. And so the men said to her, we will, we, we will be blameless of this oath. If yours, which you have made us swear, unless when you come into the land and bind, and bind this, this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you you let us down and unless you bring your father and your mother and your brother and all your father's household to your home <coughs> excuse me so shall it be that whoever goes outside the doors of your house into the streets his blood shall not be on on uh, on his own head and we will be guiltless. And whoever is within the household, his blood shall be on our, our heads if a hand is laid on him. And if you tell this business of ours, then we will be free from your oath which you made us swear. So the deal is made. Understanding. Listen. Their deal is, 
We're good with the contract of this verbal a contract. You let us down. Take the rope that's the, it's red rope hang it outside your window and make sure everybody's inside your house you want to be saved. If anybody that's outside of it, when we attack, their blood is not on our hands. But if something happens to anyone in the house while we attack, then their blood is on our hands. So whoever you want saved, keep them in the house, stay in the house until it's all over with. But on top of that, if you say anything about this deal to anyone, deal's off. Sometimes we talk too much and we put too much information out there to, to, to the wrong people. We, I was talking about uh, to, my, to my brother here just a little bit about uh, somebody praying for us. And sometimes you don't want certain people praying for you. Because sometimes you, they're praying and they're slipping in words of curses on you instead of words of blessing on you. Sometimes you just, they don't need to be knowing your business to turn around and say, I'll pray for you. And sure enough, they're praying. The next thing you know, they slide in enough, enough and something else in there that brings a curse on you instead. Not about you. In the last three, four years, I've really learned about people cursing with their words. And how it brings a problem when you, you get this battle, you get this tenseness in the house. You get this thing like, what's going on here? Why is everybody acting like a mess? You know, it, 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 something's going on here. Not knowing somebody on the outside is speaking words against you and trying to get things to turn upside down so maybe that your house would fold. That's why it's so important to anoint your house and plead the blood over your family every day. Every day, it's a battle every day. But for her, she says, for Rahab, she says, deal. I won't say a word. I'll make sure everybody's in the house. I'll put this on the outside of my window so when you see the red scarlet rope, Hanging there, you will know not to destroy my house and you will walk by it. It's the exact same picture of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the exact same thing <coughs> that Moses told the people, listen, the last plague is coming and it's death. So get the, let's kill the lamb. Let's make this supper that God told us to do. Put the blood on the outside of the door. And when the death angel comes, it will pass over and it won't hurt us. We saw this happen in, in 2020. I know for a fact that I did this. God told me, said, take your anointing oil, use it and, and declare it as the blood of Jesus Christ. Put it on your doorway and then plead the blood over your house and no one will get the COVID. I did that and God said, go on your live and tell the people that it will watch watch you and listen to you on your live on Facebook and tell them to do the same thing. I did that and I got confirmation that a year later that everyone that did that, that followed me on that live, did not get the COVID. Every one of them. Because the word of God stood true that the representation is, is that this time, this next thing that is coming, you need to do the same thing. You can even start now. To be ready for what is yet to come. Because there is another death coming across the land. And in this, to prepare for this death, go ahead and get your anointing oil. Pray over this oil for God's blessing to be upon it. To represent the blood of Jesus Christ. Put it on the doorpost over here. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I even go as far, sometimes I go out to my yard. And I go around my yard and sprinkle the oil. And plead the blood of Jesus around my whole yard. Because I'm telling you what is coming is going to shake America. And it's going to be death like 2020, but more. Sheesh. Let's read on. Verse 19. And so it shall be that whoever goes outside the doors of your house and in your windows. Oh, I already read that. Did I read that? Yeah, I read that. I lost my track. 22, verse 22. Thank you. It says, Then they, de they departed and went to the mountains and stayed there three days until the, uh, the pursuers returned. Then the pursuers sought them all along the way, but did not find them. So the two men returned, uh, descended from the mountains and crossed over. And they, they came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all that had befalled them. And they said to Joshua, truly the Lord has delivered all the land into the, to our hands. For indeed, all inhabitants of the country are faint-hearted because of us. See, that's what's going to happen to America. Listen, listen, listen. The heaviness 
of understanding God is going to be a difference. We're going to know, because th this really struck me the other day. It was uh, 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 um, Friday night. I got, a, I got a text message from my daughter who lives in Arkansas. And she said, Dad, go look up into the sky. Go look up into the sky right now. It's really cool. And she sent me a picture, and it looked like the northern lights. And she's in Arkansas. And it looked like the northern lights was happening right there where they were in, in Arkansas. I was like, oh, wow. So I was like, you know, I'm in this wedding. I'm like, well, babe, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go check this out. And I went outside there, and it's nothing. It's just black sky with a few stars, you know. Like, I said, sorry, honey, there's nothing here like that here. And all of a sudden, I just started thinking, like, you know, the judgment of God is going to come, and we're going to see it in a way. We're going to know it's God. That was God in Arkansas. Whatever reason that was from, was it from the solar flares that came from the sun that, that, that was let off, you know, and they were expecting it yesterday and today, you know, uh, Friday and Saturday? I, I don't know. But you know that that was a God thing. It was nothing man-made. And the things that are going to come, we're going to understand that th this is God's judgment on our sins of America. It's just going to be exactly like Nineveh of understanding. We need to repent as a nation, as a people. Some of us got it. We're repenting. We're turning from our sins. We're trying to get things right. We're trying to get in the right direction. But as a nation, we have not turned from our sins. And we need to do that. But this woman, she sets the precedence of understanding on Mother's Day. And for you mothers that are now and your mothers that are to be, watch what happens to Rahab, who was a woman who sold her body for sex to make money. That God would use her in a way. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 17, it says, And now their city shall be doomed by the Lord, destruction, destruction it and all who are in it. Only Rahab and the, har the, the harlot shall live, and she and all who are with her in her house, because she hid the messengers that were sent. Just because of her one act of kindness, she saved her family. Not just her present family of mom, dad, sister, brother, cousin, but she saved her future family. Check this out. Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. The genealogy in Matthew chapter 1 is a genealogy of King David to Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, verse 5 gives a genealogy. Salmon, Salmon, Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot o Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. So Rahab marries this guy who's in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So the woman who was the harlot, the prostitute, now is in the genealogy that her child would now be the child that, that turns around, the great-grandchild, the great-great-grandchild, the great-great-great-grandchild, who now is Jesus, the Savior of all mankind. What kind of blessing do you want for your children? Are you willing to do what it takes now, right now, to first make the decision, I'm going to put God first? That's what Rahab did. She says, I'm done with the prostitute life. I'm going to follow God. I'm a fear. I don't, I'm going to lose my life. I'm going, to, I'm going to make this deal with these men of God. And I'm going to follow God. Because he's the final judge. No matter what. He's the final judge. And I'm, I'm fearful for my life for eternity. But in doing that, there's this attached. It's no guarantee. But it seems like it's, that's the way God works. There's this attached blessing. That something's going to be handed down to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and so on and so forth. According to the scriptures, a believer of Jesus Christ, there is a ten-generational blessing of salvation. Ten generation. And I stand on that for my children. All my children. They'll know Christ. 
Their children will know Christ, and I will, I will see ten generations in heaven with me. So as we close, mom saved our family. What about you today? Whether you're a teenager, you're a young woman, you're 30s, 20, 30s, maybe you're, you're an older mom. What is your decision today about your future family? And even maybe today, your family now. What if it was you, teenager, you're following Christ would bring salvation and a commitment to the rest of your family? What if it's your desire to continually search God and seek Him and want to go to church and read your Bible and pray and seek Him every day that will change and save your entire family? Because maybe your, your dad, your stepdad don't know Jesus. Maybe your mom, she just, she just flirts with Jesus when she needs Him. You know, there's a lot of moms out there like that. They're single, single parent moms. They just flirt with Jesus when they need Him. They go to church when things start getting bad, and then when things start getting good and he's blessed them, they're back to the same old ways. I know some moms that they're, they're, they struggle and they struggle and they struggle because they live a two-faced life. You want the blessings of God? Get rid of the two-faced life. Quit the drinking and the partying and the fornicating and the smoking cigarettes and the cussing and, and the gossiping. Put all that way of life down. Quit doing it. You're just showing your kids the way to hell is all you're doing. You're saying, praise Jesus, praise Jesus on Sunday. And then the rest of the week, you're living, living like the devil and your kids are watching them and you're just sending your kids right to hell. Maybe if you just say, you know what, I'm all in. And you start reading your Bible every day. And watch your kids start pulling up beside you to listen to you read to them. Then you start praying with them. Then you start taking them to church with you. You want to see things change? It starts with you first. You want to save your family? It starts with you first. So as we close in prayer, if y'all bow your heads. At some point, I know God's going to move greatly in this place. And altar calls will be a thing. But my altar call is for you online and just the few that are here. As your decision starts within your heart, first I ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, then today's the day that will change your life. To repent of your sins because the wages of sin is death. Your eternity is in balance. Today, you don't know if your life is going to end today. There's been massive, crazy weather. I was talking to my, my friend uh, Seda in, in Kenya a couple of weeks ago. There was a mass flood there that just came and just washed away and a bunch of people died. There's a mass flood happening in Brazil right now. And a bunch of people are, are, are dying because of the flood. America is seeing great storms happening and tornadoes. There was one area that hit the most, the, the most tornadoes they've ever seen in one day. The weather is showing craziness. And then that life you just don't know, let alone just to drive down the road. And, and a car wreck could happen and your life is over with. Where will you spend eternity? On this Mother's Day, I know, where, I know where a lot of moms are. They're in heaven because they follow Jesus Christ. Do you not want to see your mom again in, in heaven? Maybe today is the day that you choose. I, you know what? Mom was right. Grandma was right. Great grandma was right. They loved Jesus and they followed him. They showed it. They lived it. I'm going to do that today too. Maybe you today you'll just say, I want to be born again. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ like mom. And for the rest of you, it's to say, you know what? I want to, I want to see my family saved. I want to be the one that will do what it takes to bring, like Rahab, I will make the deal with God to save my family. What will it take? What do you need to give up of a sinful lifestyle 
that will open the doors of salvation to your whole family. What will it take? For her, it just says, you know, I'm walking away from this lifestyle and I'm going to trust God with everything. And she ended up in the, as a, in the family line of Jesus Christ. You just don't know what God will do in your life if you just surrender. Will you surrender today? I'm just pleading with you on this Mother's Day. This, this day just seems a little bit extra for me. Where I've been fortunate enough, I still have my mom, but everybody around me doesn't. So it seems a little bit heavier for me to plead with you. To plead with you. Will you believe what your mom believed? Will you believe what your grandma believed? Jesus is the only way to heaven, to God Almighty. He is the only way. So will you repent? Will you turn? Will you re-engage? Will you turn your life back over? Let's pray. Father, as we close, I just ask now for your help. Holy Spirit, to come upon everyone here that's listening. Mm. I want to pray a little bit extra, a, a request of a favor. I want to see, I want to see a turnaround. I want to hear a turnaround. I know your greatness and your love for these people. They stuck around and they're listening up until now. That if they're far away and there's a problem between you and them, if they're not saved, or maybe there's another riff happening, some people, they, I was talking to my brother earlier, and it was like some people just, they get mad at God because of, of something bad happened. It's when you praise him in the storm of life is when the, the connection really turns things around. That today, I'm asking you to show your love in a special way to everyone that is hurting right now. To the ones that, that mom's not here today. And I miss her. That you would do something a little extra of love towards them today. We know this land is, we know our, our, uh, our lives are cursed with this death thing. We, how much we wish we were immortal and we could live forever and mom could live forever, but it doesn't happen that way. That's just the reality of it. Until we get to heaven, until Jesus comes back, each and every one of us, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. We will see death. So, Father, today, I pray for mercy. I pray for grace. And I pray for an extra bit of your love to heal the brokenhearted. To bring back the good memories. A picture of remembering the good things. But God, most of all, just like Rahab, she made a choice. Today is the day I make a choice. Not just to save my, my, the, my family's life now, but to save my family life that's coming in the future. For the children yet to come, the grandchildren yet to come, I surrender my life to you, God. I believe Jesus lived a perfect life. I believe he laid down his life to be the sacrifice for me and that you raised him from the grave. I believe it and I trust in it. Save me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me a new person. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hear their prayer as they call out to you right now. God, I pray now your blessing upon your people. Pray your blessing upon your word as Isaiah quoted that may your word go forth and accomplish the things whereunto it is sent. That on this Mother's Day, life changed for the good because we chose you. So bless your people this day. 
I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.